Well, what's up all you rockin' natures? Yeah, it didn't quite work the same way, but. Well, it's just one day, 24 hours later, since I debuted my crosscut sled, and I have got a lot of responses for it. Um, mainly because of the five cut method. People are really wanting to know a little bit more about, uh, like a further clarification of how that works, and I'm gonna give that to you. Uh, and I'll just touch on a couple of things, uh, why I built the sled the way I did. First off, one of the main things that people have been asking me is how come I did not put a fence on the front like I did the back? Because uh, most sleds typically are a pass-through construction, which means they can start anywhere back here and be able to pass through the blade. Well, this one is a little bit limited in that respect because uh, I don't have a, a fence that rides over the blade. And to be honest, most sleds that have the fence on the back typically are about this wide, maybe, you know, sometimes a little wider, but I felt that I didn't need something to overhang this far on the back of the table saw uh, because I still have, even with the blade up all the way, and as far back as I can get it, I still have a crosscut capacity of 16 and a half inches, which is more than enough for most of the things that I that I cut. I don't know, that's just something I, I really didn't feel I wanted or needed, and I was very happy with the way my old sled performed with uh, this kind of setup. So that's why I did what I did. Now, one of the viewers that uh, questioned my rails to see if I actually had the grain pattern running the way that I intended, uh, if you can look right here, the grain pattern is running vertical, up and down. And uh, that is the characteristics of a quarter sawn piece of wood. Wood movement occurs with the grain. So if the grain is running this direction, the, the wood movement is gonna be running this direction. Very little uh, wood movement expansion will be happening this way. And I live in Oklahoma and there's a lot of humidity changes here and I have yet to have a problem with any kind of swelling problems. So that is a, a good thing. Now another person asked me, um, once I had the, the fence set the way it was supposed to be set, did I put any more screws in the bottom of the fence to hold it in place? And the answer is yes I did. Uh, my pivot point is right here and uh, these were the two screw holes that I was playing with to actually uh, get the fence aligned properly. I put in a screw here and then two by the blade to keep the fence in, in, uh, in check and uh, I made another five cuts to check it again and it held its position. So. Uh, this thing is completely set, ready to go. Now, another question somebody asked was my curvature of the uh, sled. And one of the main reasons I did it is because the ash that I used, I ran short on. I actually only had this much left over. And uh, <laughs> to solve the problem, I just made some curvatures to kind of play off one another. And it also took some of the weight off of the sled. I mean, the one I had before was kind of pretty heavy to move back and forth from one uh, from the saw to where I stored it. So, um, I don't know, kind of style points. I kind of like it. Uh, another person asked me why I offset the blade on my fence, and that was to take care of any kind of uh, blind spots, so to speak. I had my other one perfectly centered, so if I needed something that was 19 inches or 19 and a half inches, well, that's where my fence stopped on my other saw on both sides. And the problem with that is uh, I couldn't you know, take the piece and move it over to the other side and, and get that measurement because it was perfectly centered, which was something I thought would be nice, but it wasn't. I can do anywhere up to uh, probably 11 and a quarter. So anything that's over 11 inches, I can just flip over here to the other side and I can get upwards of 16 and a half inches probably safely. And anything over 16 and a half can be done against the fence. All right, now the thing that most of you are really wanting to find out more about, and that's the five cut method. One of the questions people were concerned with is, how did I know which direction to move my fence? Well, if you can think of this, your saw blade being the 90 degree, and your fence being ground zero. So you have zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 90 degrees right here. And these are the positive numbers, one through 90, positive from zero back this way is negative until you get all the way to you know 90 degrees or 180 degrees really uh, from the saw blade. Um, whenever I did my equation and I subtracted uh, all my measurements out, multiply, divide, blah, 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 it came out to a negative 0.013. And that tells me that I was past zero this direction and I needed to move the fence back that direction. Now to the equation. 
The reason why the equation is so uh, big is because you're trying to correct the error that's at the blade. And because your fence is not pivoting at this spot, you have to use this equation to figure out where your error is going to be right here because your fence is pivoting right here. This is where the error originates. And you use the formula to adjust to find the error right Whenever here. Whenever you get back to your fifth cut and you cut this slice off like I did here, you just measure the distance on the top and the distance on the bottom. In my case, those two numbers came out to 0.948 for the top and 0.974 for the bottom. When you subtract those two, it comes out to being a negative number. The division by four represents the four cuts that you just made on that piece of wood. The 13.85, or 875, what it should have been, is the length of this fifth cut, the actual length of the entire strip. The 28.75 is the length from my pivot point of the fence. Let me, let me zoom this out. That's the length of my pivot point that's down here to all the way down here at the very end of the fence. Yes, whenever I did this equation on camera, I, rash, I rushed through it because I was already running a little long with this video, but this 28.75 was multiplied by this answer to get this negative 0 0.013. So I'm going to run through this equation and instead of doing the 13.85, I'm going to change it to 13.875 and show you that I still ended up with the correct number. So my top was 0.948, subtract 0.974, enter, and then divide that by the four cuts, then divide that by the 13.875, which is the length of my fifth cut, and multiply that by 28.75. and my number is negative 0 0.01346. So I was still correct, luckily. Let's just say we were positive 0 0.13. Instead of putting the feeler gauge in here first, like I did, you would actually uh, stop with the feeler gauge. You wouldn't even put it in there yet. You would actually put this point up against the fence because you're gonna be moving it back this thickness right here. So you put it up against there, clamp it down, loosen your fence, move it away from this, and it'll be clamped so it won't move. Take your feeler gauge and put it in between and then push your fence up against the feeler gauge between your stop block. Then tighten your fence back down. That's how you adjust for a positive number. The negative number, like I did before, you start with the feeler gauge in between because that's the amount you're going to push the fence forward. So you clamp this down with the feeler gauge in between Take the feeler gauge out, loosen the fence, and push it up into the stop block. That's how you correct for your error. If you guys have any other questions, I hope I explained the formula to you well enough that, that you can understand why it's done the way it is. Don't ask me how the formula was derived because I am not going to be able to tell you. <laughs> I'm not a physics major. So um, that's it, guys. I hope you uh, got some use out of this little run through to uh, kind of clarify some things about this sled because everybody wants to build one of these things and doing it right people are a little intimidated about doing these fine-tuned adjustments so until next week guys i will uh, have another project for you don't know what it is but that's the surprise <laughs> be safe in your shops and i'll talk to you later